We're going to take a look at solving the same compound inequality we just did graphically. However, this time, notice that we've changed this to numerically. When it says numerically, what you want to do is um, solve it using a table. And there is a table feature in your calculator which we are going to use. We will first do this with a TI-89 and then we will go ahead and do it in a Casio. So let's take a look at the TI-89. Notice that I still have the graph from solving this graphically in the last video. Now we're going to go ahead and do this numerically in a table. If we go to our y equals, notice I still have the equations in y1, y2, and y3, just like I did before, where the left side is our y1, the middle is our y2, and the right side is our y3. So we're going to be looking for when y1 is less than or equal to y2, which is less than or equal to y3. So first thing you want to do is enter them in. We already have them in there. Then you need to set your table so that it's going to show the values you need. So we're going to go ahead and go to table set, which is in green above F4. So if you hit the diamond key and then F4, notice it'll ask you where do you want your table to start. Well, let's assume we don't know the answer to this, and we know negative 2 isn't too, too large, so how about we start this at negative 5? And I always suggest, if you hit enter, um, this second part right here, if you arrow down, is a triangle, and then it says TBL, which is short for table, and it has 1 in there. What that's saying is to make each value in your table go up by 1. So it'll start at negative 5, then it'll show negative 4, then it'll show negative 3, and so on. I suggest starting with that table set, um, change in table, the triangle means change of, the change of table being 1. Um, if you don't see your values with it as 1, go to point 5, and if you still don't see it, then you can go to point one. But we're going to start with just one. And notice enter equals save. So we're going to hit enter. And then notice it goes back to where we were. If you actually want to see the table, you have to go to table, which is in green above F5. So you hit the diamond key and F5. Now what we want to do is you can use your arrow keys and go left, right or left, and up or down. We're going to want to scroll down until this y1 column equals the y2, because that's going to tell us where our intersection for that was. So I'm going to arrow down, and notice right here, the y2 and the y1 are the same. That means this is where they are equal, and that's at x equals 1. So that's very important for us. So I'm going to arrow down just a little bit farther so I can see more of the table. And I'm going to compare what happens before this spot and what happens after it. If we find here where it's equal, and then we go just before it, notice that just before it, the y2 is negative 4 and the y1 is negative 2. That means that at this point, y2 is less than y1. And we want to know when y2 is greater than y1, because that's what our statement is saying. If I go to the other side of this point, notice that y2 is um, 0 and y1 is negative 2. In this case, the y2 is larger than y1, and that's what I want. So our turning point right here is at x equals 1, and the section of your equation right here is true when you are after 1 or equal to 1. So on our table that starts at 1 and continues forward. Now what we want to do next is find out when the y2 is less than y3. So let's continue down until they're equal because that's our turning point. Notice right here where x is 6 the y2 and y3 are the same. If you compare just after them, just after them, y2 is larger than y3. 
We don't want that. We want y2 to be smaller than or equal to. And that happens when your x value here is 6 and just before it. So if you look at the table, and I'm just going to sketch part of the table, when x was 1, we had a negative 2 in the y1 column and a negative 2 in the y2 column. This was our turning point. And after it, we had y1 values that were smaller than y2. If we go back to our table specifically, the next couple values were 0 and negative 2. So we had negative 2 here and 0 there and that was at 2. So everything continuing until we get to 6. And at 6 the y2 was 8 and our y3 was also 8. So that right there was a turning point. And if we looked right before that in the table, we have a 6 and an 8 which makes our y2 less than our um, y3. So from here backwards in the table was everything that satisfied the second part over here. So we want the values in the table that are between this 1 and 6, which gives us our answer from 1 to 6. Everything between with x values between 1 and 6 makes it so that this y1 is less than y2 and the y2 is less than y3. So that's how you find the table in the TI. Let's take a look at the Casio. If you have your equations in the Casio like we do right here, then you can actually go straight to your table by, let me change something, pressing the button that looks like a table if you're in here that's right next to the graph. So if you touch the part with the y equals, notice a dark um, rectangle goes around this screen. Whoops. Uh, no. There we go. Um, that a dark rectangle went around the y1, y2, y3 screen. Um, when you're in that, you'll have a graph on the side that on the left hand side if you push that it goes to the graph which we had in the last video and now that's got a dark rectangle. If you touch the um, y equals it'll go back to there and if you touch the table thing right next to the graph look what happens it gives you a table and so notice that table is kind of small I don't really want to look at it like that the menus down here if you look at those the fourth one over says resize since I have the dark rectangle around my table, if I touch resize, I'll get a larger table. Now notice that table does show the y1 equaling y2 when x is 1 right in here. However, it doesn't go down far enough for everything else. And I don't see my y3. There's a little bar right here. If you scroll it over, you see the rest of the table and your x values stay in there but now I can see my y2 and y3 to compare them. If I needed to go farther if you click the button that's farthest to the right which has two arrows that allows you to change your table. So in this case we need to uh, choose a start and an end. A zero for a start is fine in this case however my end value should be larger. Let's go up to 10. And you can step it however you want. So we could step it by 0.5s or let's step it by 1s like we did in the other table. If you click OK, now you see the new values. So if your table is not big enough, you can just expand it using that button on the top up here with two arrows. So now I can see that at 1 here, the y2, y1 and y2 are equal. And after that, um, the y2 gets great, is greater. If I scroll over, I see my y3, and you can see that at 6, the y3 and the y2 are equal, and before that is when they're smaller.
So you get the same values, just a little different way of looking at it in the Casio.